Well, all through high school, I went as Johnny Smith. But when I finished high school, I went to uh, go in the service, and I couldn't get in the service. That's when I found out I had to get a new. I had to, get, I had, I had, I had to present a birth certificate, and I didn't have one. Never did have one. So when I got the birth certificate, I saw I had a different name on my birth certificate than what I written that. I've been using all through the years. And that was uh, my name on my birthday was, was Johnny William. I went by the name of Sweetening. And they called me Sweetening because I used to walk around and suck my thumb and do some more things, but I'm not going to include that. But, uh, and then they used to call me Mr. Bowleg. They called me Bowleg because uh, I, joined, I joined the club and and everywhere I went, they called me Mr. Bowleg. The young ladies did, even though I was married, but they just loved them bow legs. And uh, the other name was Mr. Cake Man. You know, I used to make cakes. And they called me the Cake Man. And uh, I think uh, they, enjoy, they enjoy my cakes, so they called me Mr. Cake Man. That's where they can get in touch with me. I was born in the... Uh, March the 6th, 1944. My biological mother and father, my mother was Miss Rose Miller Mitchell. And my dad was uh, Johnny William. Oh, I had a good relationship with my mother, but my father, he died when I was about two or three years old. Uh, he passed away, so I didn't know my father. They, they cared, well, I did go to his funeral, and uh, he, was, he was buried down in Greene County somewhere back down that way, but I was three years old. I remember going to his funeral, and I remember going out on the back porch. And it was in the country, that had been about, uh, let's see, I'm 78 now. So that had been about 75 years ago. So I remember going out on the back porch crying like a baby. Well, I was a baby, really, when I was two or three years old. 
and they put me back on that bus and sent me back home. So I never did go to his funeral. So Miss Helen Grice done a whole lot of things, and uh, she helped me going through school. You know, back then, uh, other parents would help raising you. You know, so you, so I was such a sweet boy. She, she took me under her wings and, and took care of me, along with my mother too. You know, I didn't, I didn't desert her, but, but Miss Helen was instrumental in, in my upcoming. We had 14 siblings. I mean, I, I mean, I had 14 siblings. Well, 13, 14 with me. But anyhow, uh, I only knew six of them. Uh, two of them, I had two brothers that died in New Jersey. I didn't know them. They never did come back. They left Bethlehem, Alabama and went to New Jersey. Never did come back to Bethlehem, Alabama to see their mother. Nobody. So, uh, but the other, the other six was my brother Dennis Smith, Clarence Smith, Elizabeth Thomas, Mary Thomas, and Dorothy Thomas. All the boys were Smith and all the girls were Thomas. My name is Mary Adams and I am the youngest sister of John Smith. He is my youngest brother. John Smith is a brother that I believe was sent from God to my mom. He is one of the best brothers that I can think of, that I thank God for. He has never changed. He is a very spiritual brother, and he is a very respectable brother. With John, as I said, he was always he was always a guy that you respected because he demanded respect and you gave him respect. He gave you respect, you gave him respect. And uh, he was a giving person, as he is now. He still is a very giving person. He is a brother that took care of not only of his younger sisters, but he took care of the family as much as he could. So he was, as I said before, he just was a man, a brother sent from God to his mom. And we always call him Sweetney. Don't know where mama got that name from, but it fits him perfectly. Yes, he did. He had, he had three sisters, and now he only has two. And yes, he did. He did spoil us. He would come around when we were in school. We went to George Washington Carver High School. And uh, sometimes we didn't even have a lunch. And we didn't know that he was coming. But he would always come and supply our needs, just like God sent him. And... Uh, he was just a very, very, very spontaneous, happy young man. He loved the sisters, and he still loved them. Oh, with, it, with mom, honey, he loved his mother. Uh, as I told his wife, Santa, when she was here on the earth, I told her, I said, if you marry a man, that knows how to take care of his mother, he's gonna know how to take care of you. And did he do a good job? Yes, he did. And he loved his mother. You could, she couldn't do no wrong. Even when she whipped him, she couldn't, he, she couldn't do no wrong. He loved his mother. And he did what he could do for her. Uh, John whipped me one time and I, I was saying some things that I should not have been saying because Mama was in the hospital and by me being the youngest, they tried to make me do things around the house like wash dishes. And I gave them a few choice words and he heard them. <laughs> and, and, he, and my dress was already short, so he just lifted it just a little bit. And when I, when I say that, I can still feel the burn of his hand on my thigh because he told my hips up. So I, I don't say anything 
I try not to say anything out of the way in front of him. Because I believe he will still try to whip me again. As I said, he did what he could do. He, John took care of all of us. He was always a worker. He was always a saver. He is a family man. And I know that his I know that his children know know that because uh he has taken very good care of them and he, he took very good care of his sisters and his brothers, even though he was the youngest brother. But uh he took care of them as if he was the oldest. He was always there. Singing with him was a joy. Uh, he does, he does, he tries to do everything in a very excellent way. And when he sings, he puts his heart in it. And the more he sings, the stronger his voice gets. The older he gets, the stronger his voice gets. He is, as I said, a very spiritual young man. And he loves the Lord. And I thank God for sending him this way because I couldn't have asked the Lord for a better brother. When we were growing up, older people prayed for their children and they always sung hymns. We cannot get rid of hymns as we should not get rid of prayer because grandmothers and even now mothers need to be praying for their children. And that is what my mother did. I don't care what she was doing in the house, she was humming, she was praying, her lips were moving. Sometimes I would say, Mama, you talking to yourself? She said, just live on, baby. You'll understand, just live on. But uh, yes, he got his singing from his mother. Uh, the most fondest memory I have with him is seeing how patient he was with his mother even when she was sick. He did more for her than any nurse would do for any patient, whether it was a female nurse or a male nurse. He took care of mama, he was so patient with her. And uh, with her meds, with her food, with bathing her, whatever he needed to do for her, he did it for her. And I just loved him for that, and I still love him for that. I love the memories that we would sit on the front porch and just talk about old things that happened years before we even came on the scene. And Mama would have us laughing and talking with each other. So I, I love the joy of us being together as a family and just uh, having conversation and enjoying each other. If he could help you, it didn't even have to be Mama. It didn't have to be his wife. It didn't have to be his sisters or brothers. Because my mom was like this. And I, and I, and I believe that Sweden took in everything after mama that was good. Because mama would take in sick people in her house. And, and Sweden would say, Mama, you can't take care of Miss so-and-so. You sick yourself. She said, it's my house. I take care of who I want to take care of. So when he took her to the doctor, he would take whoever else was in the house that was sick. He would take them and take care of them the same way. So that was just in his nature to do that. Of course he's made an impact on my life. I was born again at the age of 11. And just to see the mark of my brother and how he reacted around people, I took on the same thing that he did. I love, he showed love to everybody, and it's a good thing to love rather than uh, to hold grudges against people. He never did argue and fuss, but if he did, if there was a time that he did, you wouldn't want to be around him. But he was, he was a man of convictions rather than a man of conformity. 
I just want to say again, I thank God for putting him in our lives. I thank God for he is now 79 years old. I'm 73 years old. God still has us. Uh, God still has us around. My sister is 74 years old. Uh, se I'm sorry, 75 years old. And he still has us around so that we can enjoy each other in our older days. So, and, and I, just, I love Sweet. I love him. And I thank God for him. Just told me a little bit about some of your siblings. Tell me about uh, the ones that were raised by uh, Miss Helen, tell me about those siblings. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 those, I call those my, you know, what you call, stepsister and brothers, uh, but, but, but they, they, they my sister and brother because she, she done a good job in raising me and I, and I took care of them. She was, a, she was a beautician. She was a beautician, one of the best beauticians in Bethlehem. And, uh, she would always have me coming up there taking care of the kids while she, uh, uh, you know, done, done a half it, done a beautician work, and that's the way I learned how to cook. Cook the cakes and stuff. The cakes I make, that that came from her recipe, and uh, I, I learned a whole lot from her. And and uh, all of her kids are still living. All her, I mean, I mean, all all her siblings. I mean, all her kids are still living. Sheila, Leslie, I take that back. Ronya Grice. I forgot about her. She she died. She had sickle cell. She passed away. Mm -hmm. But she was she took care of mama though. My name is Sheila Marie Grice. My name is Leslie Grice Fuller. And what is your relationship to Sweetney? Sweetney is my brother. Sweetney is my brother also. Also. Well, it's like a normal brother-sister thing. We uh, talk to each other occasionally. If we need something, we can call each other. Growing up, he was my big brother and taught me a lot of different things. So. How about you? Um, he's my brother. I can count on him for anything. Um, he can count on me. He's, he's been there as a father when my father died, so he's been there as a boy. One of my, when I was younger, younger, fondest memories was him yeah. putting me up on his shoulders and playing piggyback to get to kindergarten. He'd take me to kindergarten. And, well, he didn't pick us up, but. You know, he's on at frequently taking the kindergarten. And the second fondest thing was that he taught me how to ride a bike. And I got the scars to show for it. So I love him. And all the other things. Well, some of my fondest memory was, um, Going fishing, just hanging out, um, going church picnics, um, helping him gather stuff up, helping him cook. But um, fishing, we really like to fish. Um, used to have me and Maurice over, and we do sleepovers, and he cook popcorn the old-fashioned way in a skillet and the boiled pot, and then we would eat that and watch TV. There were no DVDs or VCRs. We just had to watch what was on TV and play card games. We enjoyed playing cards. Um, he's a great role model to me because a lot of men have outside families and he took care of his family. I don't know him to do anything that was not pleasing for his wife or us as a family. To me, he was my example how to be a husband and a father. I spent, the most time I spent with Sweden was when I was in high, junior high, high school, you know, because he lived with us. And like, like 
Les said, he was definitely a father figure and someone we could trust with things. He taught me how to drive. And I remember that totally. And, uh, but he is just a true example of how um, a man should be. He likes to take care of his stuff. He can wash his cars and take care of them. Long before there was an arm there was a uh, people had to know the rug floors. He would take the floor <laughs> wax and wax the tires on his car so they would shine. <laughs> yeah. So there was no arm roll, but he came up with a way to make his tires glossy by using floor wax. I'm surprised they didn't use castor oil. I didn't know that either, but that car was always clean. Yeah, he used to wax his tire with uh, the floor wax. <laughs> like I always said, I love him because he is the epitome of what a man should be. And I'm glad and proud that I was in his life and he was in ours. So, love you, sweetening. Um, he's always been there for me. He's um, been a great example of how to live. He's been a part of my son's life. He's been just very supportive in everything I've done, encouraged me to be my best. Um, he trusts me with babysitting the savory. <laughs> <laughs> She, I was gone. She was, Thank the, you. she was the first person I actually changed a pinup diaper on. <laughs> when she was he was with the her. first one I did. He, um, me and Maurice did a sleepover one night, and they had the fold up couch. And one, each one had to sleep on the side of the couch. And if you got in the middle of the couch, it would fold up and slam back down. <laughs> So one of us rolled over and made that couch close. And the next morning, he got up fussing at us and told him we woke up his wife. And he was going to have to whoop us. <laughs> she was upset about being waking up in the middle of the night. <gasps> so he, he took us in the room and got his belt and whooped that bed pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's who you're supposed because to do. Because you know, accidents happen. So he didn't really punish us the way. Sam wanted him to punish him, but he talked to us about it and he gave that bed a good whip. <laughs> <laughs> and I always love him and support him. Did he ever take you to the um, the airport to watch the planes come in? Nah, we just went fishing. Well, that was my big thing. He drives over to the airport so we can watch the, the flights come in or mm -hmm. take off. That was fun. And the last big fishing trip was me, Sweeney, Maurice, and Terrell. And that's when Terrell gave him a German Shepherd puppy and he brought it home. We went into the station one day. And it stormed that night. I had bought a brand new radio. And it stormed while we were night fishing. My radio had worked since. <laughs> <laughs> so who got the puppy? Sweeney. Terrell gave Sweeney a, a German Shepherd puppy. Cars. That was his name. <laughs> well, it, it, it was good being a baby boy. Then it had the ups and downs. You know, we lived in a three room house, which some called the living room, the bedroom, but it was the front room, the middle room, and the kitchen. And uh, all of us slept in the middle room except my baby sister. She always slept with mama. She always had, the, you know, the better end of it. Yeah, I, 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 I just thought I wouldn't live because everybody died early, everybody was dying, so, so I just thought that I, I may leave early. So uh, that's, that, that's one reason I put everything I could in my wife's name, make sure everything was all right. So if something happened to me, she would, she would reap the benefit. But come behold, I was the longest lover. I was the longest lover, so. That, 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 that really took its toll on me. The McDonald's Breakfast Club came about by some of us going, we, we used to go up there and drink coffee and, and eat breakfast. And, uh, so um, 
I mean, not all the McDonald's Breakfast Club, the members did that. But uh, after we got together on it, some of us got together and said, we'll just form a McDonald's Breakfast Club. And then we invited some of, some of them had classmates, they invited them to join. My name is Dorothy Dot Davidson. I call him my big brother. My relationship with Sweden goes ever since I was born. I grew up in the community with him. Our parents knew each other. We've been at the same church all our lives. Club together, church together, school together. I know him all my life. Oh my God, John Sweetness Smith at our McDonald Breakfast Club is the star. <laughs> we goes out to breakfast every three months and we go to Golden Corral because you know you can go there, you have buffet style. And we, we said, Sweetie, where we going? He's okay with Corral. It's never Golden Corral. He always got a name for whatever you gonna do. So we just love him. And he just make us laugh. He tell the funny, we, him, him and a guy, Popeye, is uh, born the same month. One born March the first, one born March the sixth. They be fighting on which one the oldest. And they claim it's right. But they John Smith said, well, I was born first, so I'm the oldest. And that's where they carry on. And we just have so much fun with him. He's a life. <laughs> the McDonald's Breakfast Club Christmas celebration. Mm -hmm. When we're there, we attend John Smith, we come to John Smith house. That's where we always disperse and have our eating. And he have all the cakes and everything ready for us. And we sit there and look at the football game, laugh, talk, laugh, have fun. And he just carry on some terrible. He he turns the house over to us. He tell all of them, you're not at home. He don't, he don't do nothing. You just make yourself at home. And that's what you call a true friend when they let you come in your house and you just turn your house over to us. And it's about, it was about 21 of us in the club. Wow. And we all was at John Smith house, having a good time. Okay. Everybody loved Sweetener. If something happened in the community, Sweetener was going to be there. He cut grass. If you didn't have no money, Sweetener cut your grass. He wasn't gonna let nobody grass uh, yard look bad. Cause he was a true believer a beautification. And he loved everybody. He called everybody dog. And every, all of us was dog. And I'll never forget one day my dad was sick and I couldn't get nobody to come help me uh, get him out the bed. And I called Sweetie. Sweetie came there like 911 to help me get dad out the bed. And him and dad was tussling. Dad was tussling with me and him because, you know, with the Alzheimer's and all. He was tussling with us. And we caught the devil trying to get dad out of that bed and put him back in the bed and everything. Cause, I mean, he was not going to get him out of the bed, put him back in the bed. Because he didn't want to get back in the bed. And me and Sweden caught the devil. And then after I got through him, Sweden sat there and talked to him. And it was, he acted just like nothing that happened. And Sweden didn't accept it. But dad had beat him up. <laughs> oh, God, yes. He, make an impact, he made an impact on my life because I never have seen him angry with anybody. He might have got angry, but he didn't show it. And he gonna always try to tell you what's right. And he gonna, he's not gonna raise his voice. Like some people are like me, he wouldn't raise his voice. He could talk to you just as low and you just think, why oh, he talking like that and I'm just about to cuss him out. But that's the type of person he was, he was humble. And that's what everybody loved about him. I love his cakes. <laughs> He's just a good hard person. Everybody loved Dog. We call him Dog, he called us Dog. And John, it ain't but one John Smith. The singing part, the laugher, all is John Smith. You know, I graduated from uh, Carver High School, the best Carver Junior High School. And uh, Cobb only went to a junior high school, so we had to graduate from there. And, and uh, we had to come over here to Dunbar. School was named Dunbar. It was, it was the Black High School in Bessemer. The name of the school was Bessemer Colored School. Uh, 
the only sign up there, the sign that faded off, but you can see the best one colored school. The name was named Dunbar, Dunbar High School. And uh, look kind of rough now. They may have to end up tearing it down. They, they, they tried to keep it going, but over the years it done deteriorated. And uh, I went here two years, no, one year. <clears throat> we graduated from Carver High, Junior High. Then we came here one year. And by the time that one year was up, they had made uh, uh, Carver uh, High School. They had made Carver High School. So uh, we went back there, graduated from there. Graduated from Carver two times. Graduated from junior high, and then I graduated from high school. Well, you know, during the, during the Jim Crow area, and uh, during segregation and all that stuff, I didn't have no problem with it because Mama wouldn't let us go nowhere, no how. We stayed at home, and uh, we had to go to Donbar School when I uh, no Carver didn't go no for uh, high school. I mean, junior high school, so we had to go to Donbar School, but. I traveled through white neighborhoods by band school, and I, I never had no problem. But I had some of my friends that live in a, in a place called uh, Thompson Town. That was over there where the high-rise apartment is, high-rise and the, and the uh, where they rent the apartments. Well, they had to come past uh, Davis School and come through that community, but they were already arrested, arrested. But me, I never had any problem with, with, segrega with segregation or uh, nothing like that, except for on my job. On my job, I, I, I retired from U.S. Steel. They didn't want you to get the good job. They want you to always be a laborer. And I wasn't going to be a laborer. I, once you went there to work, you worked as a laborer. You go in as a laborer. But they put jobs up for bid and you bid on that job. And that's what I always done. Some, some folks say, oh, you work that, all that hard work at USDL. I said, man, I said, listen. I said, they had some good jobs. And the white folks had all the good jobs. And the black folks, they, 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 they didn't want to bid on that. That's the main thing. They didn't want to bid on a job. But I bid it on the job. And I got some, I had, I ain't had a hard work job at USDL since I, until I retired, cutting grass. That's about the hardest thing I did. One guy, he, he was training me, and uh, he messed around there and throwed my lunch away because he didn't want me to have that job. Throwed my lunch away, and I went and told the foreman, and, and, and they reprimanded him about doing that. But, uh, but, I, but he eventually bid on that job and got that job and I left that job and I went to another job, bid on that job. I always bid on a job. I, I, I just believed in that. But uh, I, I, that, that's the only real place where I met segregation that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I left there and I went to uh, Britland Cafeteria and I left there. I went to uh, West End Baptist Hospital, is, which is Princeton Hospital now, but uh, it was, was back then it was West End Baptist Hospital. And I worked there for a while, and after I left uh, West End Baptist, I went to Beth McCallway. And after I left Beth McCallway, I went to uh, Green Valley Country Club. I worked out there for a while. And, uh, and I worked both jobs. I worked at Green, that's when I got hired at USD when I was working for Green Valley Country Club. And I worked both jobs and I told him, man, I got a job at USD and I said, we'll have to quit y'all. He said, no, you ain't. He said, I said, he said, how do you work? I said, I do rotating shifts. He said, well, he gave me the keys to the place and said, you come in the days you don't work, uh, the shift you don't work. So I work nights, I work mostly night shift I did the club and slept half the time I was out there because I always done my work and got through with it and went to bed and got up and went to USD and I done work. Then I worked at Hay Hayes Aircraft for a while too, a friend of mine. Well, really a friend of mine got me both of those jobs. It was instrumental in me getting the job at, uh, his name was J.T. Alexander. I've been cutting grass and stuff, a little knee how to a duck, whichever. I've been cutting grass, coming all the way up through the years. So, 
But once I retired, I went I, I went full I, I went full bloom in in, 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 in the uh, lawn care service, and name my lawn care was Keeping Care. I keep your lawn and I care about it. That's when I had so many yards. I, I, I they when they called it Keep. Uh, that's where I came up with the name Keep and Care. And everybody, you know what, folk loved that name too. Cause I mean, they loved my work. Let me put it like that. Cause I had some yards back then. I had plenty of yards. Long. That's after I retired from USDL. My highest level of education, I went to the 12th grade. And the Lord blessed me to finish that, the 12th grade. Cause I was not a, what you call a AB student. And I wasn't an FD student either. So you ain't got but one left. I done pretty good. When I was in school, I done an arts and end jobs, not no real work. I worked at that Dago store one time. I met a Johnny store. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't paying that good, so I might have well been sweeping the yard. Oh, I was a good student. I didn't get a teacher no trouble. But like I told you, my mama wouldn't have that. Well, we wouldn't have that. I was a good student in school. And all the teachers liked me. I mean, I. I mean, cared for me. You know, they didn't give me no trouble. And you know what? I didn't give them no trouble, so everything was honky dory. Okay, I graduated from Carver Junior High School. And then I went to Dombaugh because that was the only, only black high school in, um, in Bessemer, in Bessemer with, with Dombaugh High School. And I left there and I went to Dombaugh. I went there one year to Dombaugh, and then they finished Carver High School, they made it a high school. So I came back to Carver High School and, and I graduated from Carver High School twice. I got my, I got my uh, junior high school diploma and I got my senior high school diploma from Carver. And also we had, we had, we had, we had to walk to Dunbar now. No, no, I live right back there on Fourth Avenue and Dunbar was wheeled up by Pullman. So I was going to join the, the, the football team. I wouldn't play football, boy. I walked way over there to that school, and them guys was hitting so hard. And I turned around, and watching the play and hitting. I came right on back home after they hitting too hard for me. I cannot play football. So, so after that, I just came on back home. I didn't, I, I didn't play any sports in school. We just played sports at home. You know, like we had a little field we played ball and football and yeah, something like that but 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 for us regular football uh professional uh, i mean like in high, high school to college time high, high school i never did play in, in sports oh i had i had quite a few friends in high school uh, robert george joseph fowler uh, uh james broom uh, martha wilkes bernice perry I had, had quite a few. I had, had quite a few friends. They were we were pretty close. Mm -hmm. They were my closest friends. I got a lot of close friends that are still alive today. A bunch of them. I mean, the one I just named, all of those are alive. Those are my closest friends. Close friends. Uh, those, uh, those are my high school friends. But I got I got quite a few friends. You know, John Doyle, and you know, quite a few of them. My name is James Wood. John Smith and I went to school together from the first grade up until the twelfth grade. And during that time, John Smith and I, we became very good friends. We became very good friends. I'm reflecting back on it. We went to Carver Elementary School during that time. Eventually, Carver Elementary became a high school. So we left there and we went to Dunbar, which is Jackson Abram now. Anyway, we had a great time at college. Some memorable moments I never will forget. Johnny got married. Now, if I remember correctly, Johnny can correct me, I think I was the photographer at his wedding. Uh, I took pictures. Okay. Yeah. And when he got married with the photo of him. And that's how close he was. Johnny was a special kind of guy. He was a guy that loved his family. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. He loved his family and he tried to point his family in a positive direction by the way he carried himself. He was a good dad, he was still a good dad. Yeah. And we shared a lot of experience together when we were growing up. But we, we uh, learned to work. We learned to work. And, and by the way, Johnny still worked. We, we know you, we had a, we had a nickname that we used to call him. We just called him Sweetie. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Yeah, we called him Sweetie. That was his nickname. And they had one that used to call me because I was real slim. Just called me Stick. I was real <laughs> slim back then. But we had some great times, and uh, we still have great times when we come together. I, I still cut Johnny half. He come over and he visit me, and, and, and we share. Moments together that we had when we were growing up. Matter of fact, he had an accident not long ago, mm -hmm. and I was so elated that he was able to come out of it alive. Right. But I just know Johnny, learned to love Johnny, learned to respect him, and he's a good church man too. He's a good church man. He loved, he loved church. He loved the Lord. Matter of fact, he's a, he's a deacon in the church. And that's, and that's that's a big thing, Bobby. He set an example by the way he carried himself. And he, he liked to sing. He liked to sing. And he can sing. And he ain't just started. He's been doing that all his life. My father is woman with Jane. You know, we, we, we sort of played ball together when we were kids growing up. We had some good times. We played down there at Carver, Jonesville. We played ball. I can remember the time that we shared playing ball. We played uh, baseball, softball. There's a good time to play. I tell you one thing we didn't do. We didn't fight. <laughs> we didn't fight. We didn't fight. We just always found a way to get along. He, he, he's not a hard person to get along with. Either. Now he ain't gonna argue with you too much. He ain't gonna argue. If you say what you say, he gonna say what he say. He, he's not the type of guy to argue. I, I, I'm gonna call this fine. We didn't have much. I tell you what I thought about. We used to raise sweet potatoes. When we were in school, we, we would share. We would share our lunch. We took what we had and we made the best of it. But Johnny, he's just Johnny. He's just Johnny. No which way you don't care which way you turn. He's still gonna be Johnny. My name is Robert George. My relationship with John Smith goes back more than 70 years, which is a long time. That's how long I've been knowing him, and, and I couldn't find a better person that uh, I know of. John Smith is just one of a kind. He's special to me. Well, we really met on 3rd Avenue after we got up and able to go to school and everything. Uh, you know, we attended Carver Elementary School and we started in the elementary school. We finished uh, Carver High and uh, we got to be real good friends in that span of time and we just got together and thought that we, we, we're going to make a, 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 a agreement that we're going to keep this friendship going, and which we did. And he's still going, and I am too. And we, I just thank God for John Smith, as a friend, was a true friend. He was someone that you can, I can, I'm sure a lot of people, can depend on. Uh, John Smith 
He was a he is rather a easygoing person. Uh, we have never had uh, a cross word, a misunderstanding, and I love him for that. He was one of the best classmates singers I ever seen. He was good in anything you bring up to, to sing, because he know how he had the voice and he's capable and he didn't mind letting me hear his beautiful voice. Fondest memory goes back some 53 years from now. John and Sandy got married. It was a beautiful, beautiful wedding. It was highlighted with live roses and it was on the porch. And there were so many people out he and I and Joe Smith were very good friends. And uh, it was an exciting day. We, after the wedding, we had got together and done a few things, which I don't want to go into detail. When I got married, I, I just had a, you know, a pastor and me and my wife and, and a witness, a brother. But John Smith had the whole thing. He know how, he and Sandy know how to get down and how to uh, do a wedding. And they did that one up. And we, that was the most best time that we've had and I've had in a long time. Back then you didn't have big weddings like that. And that's what was so important, you know, this was a big wedding. People from all over the community came up. Oh, I can just see it in my head now. It was a wonderful time. John Smith made a big impact in my life, the way he carried his life. Uh, he was a, 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 a hard-working person. He was a, a, a Christian person. He was a God-sent man. And, and you could know that he, he loved the Lord because of the way he carried himself. He didn't, he was straight up, and he still is. I used the term was, but he is straight. And he, he, he's just a good person. You can call on him whenever you need. You know, we used to have a class reunion, and with that, uh, he was the one that we trusted with the money. Anybody got sick or whatever, call John Smith. He would relate the information to her, and he was so important to our class reunion. And I just just want to thank him right now for what he done. He worked in this community, and he just done great things for us. And and that beautiful voice of his really, I just I envy him because <laughs> I couldn't do it like him. He knew how to do, he knew how to pray, he knew how to lift the, the, the Lord's name up and glorify him, and he, he was just, he, he was just an all around good man. I know he said none is good with the Lord, but he was a good man, and, and you can always depend on him. That's what I love about him, and I know we have never had any words, but one day to show you he's straight up, I was telling him something about, uh, I won't go into detail, something that he had done wrong. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, Rob, I may be wrong, but if this keep happening, and that, I won't go in, I'm going to continue to do it. I said, okay, so John Smith, I understand. He was straight. He, he didn't shortcut nothing. He just said it just like it was. That was John Smith. Yeah, called the Community Action Committee. Yeah, at one time he was the treasurer there. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. And he, he, he worked this community and uh, we, we were doing good. Matter of fact, uh, the community is still in, in order, but we just lost a lot of people in the community and uh, we were just not what it used to be. I know he he has a beautiful yard, always have had a beautiful yard and and 
I came to him, of course I did, because whenever I get, when I asked something, he wouldn't answer. And uh, I came to him and I asked the sweet Sean Smith, how did you keep your grass so beautiful? And he told me, uh, put that ammonia on it and some type of uh, fertilizer. And I tried it and it worked. He wouldn't tell you nothing wrong. I love his yard. He, 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 he's a landscaper, true. You know, he, he know how to do a yard and really he got me into it because uh, I would try to work out. I seen him doing the part time. I said, well, sweet. I mean, John Smith can do it. I'm gonna give it a try and I did. And, and like I said, whenever I have a problem, I can go to him. I seen the way he does when he cut somewhere from a tree or something, he put a tarp up on it. Like no people, most people just let it fall on the ground. And I swear, I mean, John, he'd pick it up, put it on that top and go and dispose of it. But that was him. Just wanna say that I, I'm gonna keep him in my prayer and hope he continues to live a healthy, happy life. Because he deserves everything. I just pray for sweetening and myself. And what am I I got to pray for everybody that the Lord will continue to bless this community and the people in it. And like I said, I love you. I love sweet John Smith a lot. My friend John. Can't beat it. Okay. Uh, you were married to Santa Maria Hardis Smith for 45 years before her death. And you once made the statement that you got her fresh off the clothesline. Um, what did you mean by that? Well, uh, well, when I got a fresh, uh, when I uh, got a fresh off the clothesline, I married as soon as she finished high school. As soon as she finished high school, she finished high school in '69, and I got my job at U.S. Steel in '68. So I had a good job. And I wasn't about to let a good wife get away. And back then, you know, she was underage. I, I, I was much older than her. And uh, her mama had to sign, her mother had to sign for, for me to marry, you know. But, but uh, that was my baby. I thought I would outlive her. I mean, I thought she would outlive me, but it, it went the other way. But uh, I love that girl. But I know I remember them legs she had. They were with some beautiful legs, so I wasn't about to let that get away. So we went on and we got we we, we got married. I, I I know she had she had uh, another outfit. My wife did. Uh, uh, you know that that suit I got where we do the Lord's up in that striping. What you call that striping suit? Now she had one of them things. Now you talking about something? Now 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 if you got to mention that instead of the the green pants. I don't know nothing about the green pants, but but but, but I know that, that that black suit she had on was beautiful, boy. I mean, but I love that girl. She was going to church out there, and she saw me singing, and she fell in love with my singing, and I fell in love with her. So so we we remember the same church. She was a Christian lady, and I was a Christian man. So we made a dynamic couple. You know, when I asked her to marry me, I didn't have no problem. Well, I I take that back. You know, you know they ain't gonna want their daughter to leave and and, and marry an older man. She just been in high school and they want her to go to college and all that stuff. And and they wonder where you gonna take her. I told them I got a good job. There ain't gonna be no problem. She going to school, and she did go to school and finished became a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't no problem. She would sneak by the house and holler at me. It wasn't no problem. In order to have a longevity in marriage, you, you got to have faith in your companion. You got to believe in her, and you got to uh, well, believe in each other, and you got to trust in each other. And the next thing that you got to pray over. And once you do that, everything else will fall in line and be sincere about what you're doing. My church affiliation is Second Avenue Beulah Baptist Church, uh, the only church I've ever been a member. Been here all my life. And uh, I love this church and I hope it continues to prosper. We are doing good. We are now in the process of, we have just got a new pastor. 
uh, but Reverend Patterson, he passed and passed and gone. And I love him. He was a wonderful preacher, a wonderful pastor, a wonderful leader. I respected him, and he respected me. We didn't have no cross talk, but I love my pastor. But we got a new pastor now, and we got to move on. There's going to be some new ideas, and you know, every pastor bring along his his ideas and his changes. So, uh, Reverend Eugene Warren is our new pastor now, the third. The only thing I can say that I don't, in my lifetime here at Beulah Island, Island Hill, just about every office you can name except the pastor. On the trustee board and deacon board and choir and Sunday school, BTU, you just name it all. And I've, I've, I've been an officer and been a member of all those. You know, those are my affiliations with, with all the auxiliaries here at the church. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Reverend Eugene Bourne III. Well, I would first of all consider myself a friend of his, uh, church member and pastor. And that's my relationship with him that goes back quite a while. Uh, as for me, um, that would entail many nights uh, where we would have service and we would be here alone. And it was always good to see Deacon John Smith show up and lead in devotion and help us along the way. It was just always a pleasure to have him as a member because he would be faithful and he would he would be there for us. Well, I would say we, we have quite a few, even out at the um, picnic, the church picnic, we would laugh and joke out at uh, Vision Land at that time. Um, we, make a lot of chicken wing jokes. He loved crunchy chicken, and so uh, that's one thing we always could have a little laugh about. And, and of course, uh, the cakes he would bake. Uh, I always wait for another slice of his famous cakes. If you're hearing this brother, I'm waiting now. He could keep us laughing. He could keep us laughing with his humor. Um, and it really, it really enlightened the whole journey and what we were going through by him just uh, having a, a brighter look and, and words of encouragement to say. And he could always lighten the room with his uh, personality. Yeah, most definitely because he would set the example of um, just sticking it out, not giving up. Uh, he would always be committed, uh, steadfast to whatever he's doing. Um, he's um, multi-talented and he, unselfishly would give of himself um, in the service of the church, uh, even with the groundskeeping and just being there for uh, church members in their time of bereavement and in all of our celebrations. And so just to model after a member like that uh, is, is a blessing because he gave us good footsteps that we could walk in. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you stayed with the church and you didn't go to Hollywood. Uh, we enjoyed you being here so many years that we could count on you and we look forward to many more. Um, I, would, I would love to hear a soundtrack. My name is Lily Y. Patterson. John Smith is known as Doc to me and we've been members of Beulah since, what year was that? <laughs> Wait a minute. We've been members of Beulah. He's been a deacon when I joined there, so. Um, for the last 50 years, God is the kind of person that will make you love him. He's a jokester. He loves to tell jokes and they are all clean, nice, and he cooked the best cakes in town. <laughs> he loves to feed you. So that makes a difference in your life when you can get a good meal. <laughs> when his children were small, and he, their mama would take them downstairs when they could have. 
and he would shake his head and said, Lord, Lord, why don't she wait till we get home? And she said, no, right now. He didn't like that too much, but he had to deal with it. Yes. It was always a great, fantastic appreciation. And there was always some laughter in it, no matter what. Uh, I don't think nobody could have done that job better than he has done over the years. And he looked forward to it. He started planning from this year to the next year of what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. So it was always fantastic or something different. You hadn't heard a song till you hear Doug. Without Doug singing, there has been no singing. He's more than Sam Cooke. He's greater than Sam Cooke. Because there's some feeling in his singing <laughs> better than Sam Cooke. And he's the one man choir during the whole uh, COVID period. He was always ready and well prepared for whatever they needed. When there are two deacons that I told somebody that uh, I know love the Pattersons. All of them might like them, but I know these two love them, and he's one of those. He came to every rescue, everything that was ever done, everything that has happened over our life, he was always a part of. And he was one of the first persons, church-wise, to respond as to what he need to do or what we needed or if we needed anything. He was one of those that would be the first to respond. They but one dog, so yes, he's the greatest. He's the most gracious person at Beulah Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say that from my perspective and my family perspective, they all know Bruce Smith. Ah, uh, he's Bruce Smith at church till we get close together and then he's dog. My family know dog. <laughs> Even when they come, they want to hear dog sing something if it ain't nothing but a hymn. Mary L. Thompson White. We're cousins through my grandmother. My grandmother used to take us, it was five of us girls, and she used to take us down to the country. And that's where his dad was lived, down there with his, uh, his relatives. And that's how we first met. Mm -hmm. We'd go down and spend the summer. Uh, well, not the entire summer, but a few weeks out of the summer on the phone with them. And then we came back to Nelson. That's when we discovered John was our cousin. My grandma told us. She called us little little women might get the wrong ideas. <laughs> he was my grandmother's his dad is my grandmother's cousin. John and I Quite close. I've been knowing him since we were kids. He's much younger than I am, but we've been going to the same church and always live in the same neighborhood. I learned a lot about John, or Johnny as my grandmother called him, when I returned home. That's when we became close. But living in the same neighborhood and going to the same church. Uh, I knew him when he was younger. He's along with my youngest brother. They finished school together. John is a singer, and he always led song. I came through the choirs before him. I left town, and I came back. He's still there, still a great soloist. Funny, 
He's informative and he's very funny. But he kills it like it is. I would because he and I can chit chat about anything. He's very helpful. If I need something, he'll do it for me or he'll find someone to do it for me. And that's good to me because I'm a widow. I, I know it's 20 years. You couldn't ask for anyone better. Then uh, he doesn't create any problems, ask unnecessary questions. If you ask him to do something, he'll do it. Okay, dog. Or he taught Sunday school. He's a deacon. And anything church wise, he would be for you. He would help you. He's very helpful to us as widows, old women. Um, sweetening, we call him sweetening because he was just so sweet. He always smiled, but he loved sweetening. We used to, they used to laugh at him because of his voice, you know, he had a high voice. And that was unthinkable at the time for a man to have, or a boy to have, or, you know, tell a voice like this. But he could sing. He was very helpful around, you know, with his mom, his sisters and brothers. But we just had a nice family relationship. I love talking to him. We laugh. We talk about people <laughs> and say things funny about them, you know. Uh, going to church. I love serving in church with him, in the choir. Um, at church meetings, him being a deacon. And we just, just talk and jump. Well, I've been singing all my life. Mm -hmm. I've been singing, I've been singing all my life. I, I've been here at Beulah all my life, and most of my singing was under Miss G.H. Chandler, Miss Georgia Chandler. Uh, that's when I started singing, and uh, when I was, uh, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't, we had what you call a youth choir, you could sing in the youth choir, but you couldn't sing with the adults choir, I mean, singing on Sunday, you can sing Sunday school choir, but you, you couldn't sing unless you were 12 years old or been baptized, and you couldn't get baptized until you were 12 at that time, but some folk got baptized before 12, but, but uh, once you, Turned 12 and you got baptized, and you could sing in that choir, sing in the, in, in the church choir then. And uh, I was singing one time, and this girl named, uh, what her name, this young lady, Beatrice Morris. And, and I, went to, I went to school that day, and I said, Beatrice Morris, I got religion. And I, and I can sing with y'all now. And Beatrice, uh, she, no, no, they were, they were happy for me. But, but if some I, I, I enjoy doing, I, I've been singing, I've been singing all my life. And thank the Lord for the voice, that talent I got now, I'm still singing. Uh, the groups that I sing with now, I, I, I sing with several groups. Uh, but anyhow, the Southwest Mail Course that I was singing with, the Jefferson County Mail Course, and United Mail Course, and and then I sang some with Charles Diggins, you know, sang some with their choir, with, with their choir sometimes. The United Mail Court uh, was consist of members from different churches, different churches. And when, when that church had an anniversary, we, we, we would sing at that church anniversary. And then they would have a dinner, they, then they would feed us. Oh, they had some good eating back then. But, uh, United Mail Corps was a wonderful group to sing with. And uh, we went to a place called Tishaville, well, down in uh, Boulder G, Alabama. We go, we, go, we go down there every year and we raise money for that church. We raise enough money for that church to build a church, to build them a new church. And that was one of the churches that 
that uh, that they burned down the the uh, Ku Klux. They they burned it down. They burned it down. They burned down several churches down in Greene County, and uh, but they rebuilt this church back. But but we was instrumental in building that church. We we went down there. I think for about. 25 or 30 years, every, 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 every year that they had their church anniversary and homecoming. And Brother Jonathan McPherson, who had run the uh, funeral home over, over in uh, Fairfield, he always, he always preached. He preached every time we go. Mm -hmm. I got so many special moments because I, mean, I sing all the time, so all of them is really special. But. Uh, I, I sing at a lot of funerals, really. A lot of funerals, you know, besides singing. And, but, but, but those especially because the folks got confidence in you, they ask you to sing. And, and somebody said, you gonna sing that song? I said, yeah, I said, I'm, we gonna sing this song. And, and so you sing that song just about every film. I said, it may, I may sing just about every film, but that's what the folks want because it, it don't be the same folks what passed. And I tell them, I said, it's not the same song because if I sing the same song, they done came back. And they done came back somewhere wrong somewhere. But if it was something I enjoyed doing, I really did. I really enjoyed that. I really did. But, but that's special about singing, you know, uh, folk got confidence in you. Uh, I got four children. Which one is my favorite? That's a hard thing to do to say which one is your favorite. So I'm going to say all of them is my favorite. I, I love all my, all, all my children. All my children. I love all y'all my favorite. I'm very proud of all y'all. All y'all all, all have been successful. Y'all got good jobs. And y'all taking care of your daddy. And I love that. And uh, I don't want for nothing. If I ask for something, y'all make sure you see if y'all can get it. But I, but I find myself not bothering you for anything. But I just thank the Lord that you all were successful, have been, have been successful in life. I'm proud of my grandchildren. I didn't spend much time with my grandchildren because they was, they was in the service, and my son was in the service, and I had two of my grandchildren to live with me. That was uh, Jaden and Jeremiah. And I, I love them. They helped me cut grass. They were some good grass cutters. Jaden and uh, O'Neal. Yeah, O'Neal. Jaden O'Neal, yeah. I thought I said O'Neal. But anyhow, those, those, those two boys, uh, young men, uh, one in college, one in finished college, then got a job in Texas now, and the other one, he's in U University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. That's where you go to school at. But, um, and I got uh, my granddaughter, which is in Montgomery. I love her to death. She's real sweet. And I got the other two grandboys. Uh, the other two grandboys, uh, Jer uh, Benjamin and uh, Jeremiah. But I ain't spend much time with them like I spend with the others. But I love them all to death. But the only thing I do, I pray and hope that for them to live a long and peaceful life. Uh, I hope they see something in me that would help them live that long and peaceful life. I'm Ariana Smith. I'm Anna Smith. He's my granddad. He's my father-in-law. Um, he's very funny and very hardworking. If I could describe him, he would be definitely um, very caring and very kind, but he is hilarious. I love his sense of humor and um, definitely a man of integrity. Growing up, I will always be in Bessemer a lot more than I am now. But growing up, we used to always make cakes together. And then at the end, I always get to lick the icing out of the bowl. I think um, mine is when Aaron was a baby and he 
probably still says this, but he'll, um, it's a little phrase he say, uh, what is it, every day, every way. <laughs> so hearing him say that, and I think we got a video of it. Um, Ariana used to copy after, after him. So I think that's kind of my biggest memory of him. I always saying that to her. He has had a big impact on my life because seeing him work really hard for what he wants, that just motivate, motivates me to work even harder for what I want. Yeah, I have to agree. I think um, I've never seen anybody work as hard as he does. And it's almost like he has a ball of energy <laughs> that he never stops. Um, but he's definitely a hardworking man. And so that's kind of a big impact to me. I love to see it. And um, he always has still, even after that, he has energy for his family. So um, he's impacted me a lot with that. We love him. Yes. I mean, oh my God. I always have said that um, I was truly blessed with some of the most phenomenal in-laws, um, including Mama Santa. But um, for whatever reason, you know, Daddy always makes me feel, you know, home, comfortable. He's always genuine. And um, you, it's always a sense of um, wholeness when you are around him. You know, he makes you feel at home. He makes you feel comfortable. He never makes you feel like, you know, you're an outsider. Whether if I brought friends with me to his house, you know, he always, always showed um, so much love. And, you know, he was very, very genuine towards them. So. You know, I think um, he's an amazing guy all around. And there's not many people out here in the world like that. But he is genuinely an amazing person. And so um, I'm glad that I get to do life with him. And I hope he enjoys. Um, keep living, you know. We love you. We love you. My name is O'Neal Smith. My name is Benjamin Smith. My name is Jeremiah Smith. Um, I would describe him as hardworking. Um, he's always moving. Um, he's always somewhere working or doing something. Um, I describe him as like, he's, like he said, hardworking, smart, Knows how to cook. Yeah. I would describe him as, um, like O'Neal said, never stop working. He's always everywhere, no matter if he's injured or, <laughs> um, yeah, never stop working. He's smart, he can cook, and he gives a lot of um, advice. His memory. I've had a lot of fun memories with him. I'm always, um, especially when we cut grass together. Um, I know there was one situation where I had came home late from work and I didn't announce myself. And he had came around the corner and he had a gun on his hand. And I. <laughs> And I was like, hell, hey, granddad, it's me. I was like, okay. And then that was it. So after that, I've always, I've always announced myself. I've always said, hey, granddad, even though that I know that he's not home, I always say, hey, granddad. <laughs> so. My funnest memory with granddad is when I, had, I was sitting on the couch and I had a Skittles packet and then Jeremiah tried to take it from me and then granddad I came in from the back door and said, don't take that from him. And then after that, he said, can I have some? Um, my finest memory with 
granddad is uh, granddad made a cake one time and Benjamin caught him over to see something out of the window and granddad was looking and somehow he just dropped his cake <laughs> and then he made this statement we use now and it's oh man <laughs> <laughs> He's always taught me to, um, I guess, be kind to others. Um, you know, he always waving at somebody whenever he's driving by somewhere. Um, and also, he doesn't, he told me, uh, not told me, but he doesn't complain a lot. And so I really learned that. You just don't complain, just do the work and just get through it. Um, I think he impacted my life by, like, giving me advice, um, like he said, being kind to others and leaving at people who pass by. Um, he impacted my life by showing that, she, that he's a hard worker. No matter what the cost is, he gets the job done. Um, never stops. Um, and I just can count on him to be there by my side if I have any time I need. Um, he's always done his part in my life. So, um, yeah, he just was always there. Um, say, I'll say I love my granddad, and I'm always grateful for him. Uh, he's always been, uh, been there for me, uh, especially when I was staying there during college. And he's always supported me, so I appreciate that. And I, I love you, granddad. Um, he's smart and amazing. Well, y'all tell me, well, the memory, the memory I have with my children is, uh, I know my children told me I used to whoop them, and I told folks I ain't never whipped my children. But they told me, they said, Dad, I said, you used to, you used to get us, you used, you used to whoop us. But uh, that's the only thing I can tell you. I, but, but I love my children. I raised them in the way that the Lord, I believe, I believe the Lord would be, has been pleased with the way that I raised them. Uh, I used to take them on trips, and uh, we used to go to the, uh, well, we loved the parade, well, I did, too. Uh, uh, who, who was that? That was the Veteran Parade and uh, State and a &M Parade. We, we made sure we went to those parades every year, every year. So, and they would go fishing, we loved to go fishing. and. Uh, your mama, I don't think she didn't like fishing too much, but she went. But, uh, but other, other than that, those, those are some, like I said, I don't have the memory that, 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 that I should have, but anyhow, I'm trying to bring to pass what I do remember. I am the Sabria Smith Robinson. I'm the oldest child. I'm John Smith, Jr. I'm the second. I'm Erica Smith. I am the first grandchild and the fourth child. I am Jaden Smith. I'm the second grandchild. Um, dad, that is, you know, every girl has to have that example of a man. You know how a man should treat her. You know the relationship of a man. It's, you know, kind of like the responsibilities a man should have. And um, my granddad, the best example. Um, he was a family, he's a family man. Um, he takes care of his family. Um, he loves his family. Um, he gives just the right amount of, you know, um, affection. <laughs> I'm his baby, his dog, his baby. Don't fight on it. Um, and. Uh, that's, that's my dog. 
that's my dog. And he, he, was, he was such a good example of, um, you know, how I should go about, you know, meeting a man and, you know, what I should take from a man as far as how they treat me and stuff like that. Like, he was a perfect, he's a perfect example. Well, my father, I believe, is the greatest father in the world. Um, you know, growing up, he was the perfect example of a man, hardworking, you know, did anything to provide for his family, um, to make sure that we had what we needed. I just remember, you know, in college, I was calling and asking, well, Dad, I need money for this, need money for that. Then he'd be like, no, I ain't got no money, but... And he used to upset me so bad, but then he turned around and be in my account. Um, didn't realize then um, how great he was and how he was always going to make sure that we had it no matter what. Even if he didn't have it, he was going to make a way um, to get it. And that's my, that's my boy. I love him, love him life and um, I wouldn't trade any other dad for him. I'm his namesake. Um, I don't assume. <laughs> I mean, for me, he's the goat. Um, he does like he, he, he does a lot for us. Um, he he kind of had raised me from like from like being a baby to like 18 years old, like senior high school and college at half year. He taught me a whole lot. <clears throat> taught me how to be a man, how to work hard, and just be humble. That's the main thing that I learned from him to be humble, because that's like that's like his main motto. Also how to work, like do like outside work, like cut grass and work on stuff outside, like trying to fix on, like fix a car a little bit or just anything. Yeah. Now he will fuss. I learned that too. No matter what, he will fuss and he gonna have the last word, but in the end though, he well all the time, not all the time, but most times he he'll he'll be right. But yeah, he the go though, for sure. My role model. Well daddy to me, um by me being the oldest I I would say I'm the original dog, but mama was the original dog first. But um, daddy has really, is a big supporter of all of us. Um, whatever we need, uh, whatever we're in, whatever we participate, wherever we have to go, daddy is there. Um, if we tell him, let's go, daddy ready to go. Mm -hmm. Um, growing up, we like the, my siblings said, we didn't want for anything. And if he didn't have it, we didn't know he didn't have it. Because him and mama sacrificed for whatever it was that we needed. Now, he might have let the boys and my children play whatever sport there was. But for me, he wouldn't let me play not one sport. Told me I could play when I got in high school. But then he gonna turn around and tell me when I got in high school that I couldn't play. But at the same time, he didn't let me stop taking piano lessons. So now he has his personal musician. So um, wouldn't take nothing for him. He's the perfect example of a hard worker. That's why all of us are basically like Jamaicans. We are some national born hustlers and we don't know how to sit down, don't know how to stop working and always finding something to do. So, we get it from my dad. Well, I remember he had, um, <laughs> was cleaning out his closet and he had a lot of shotguns and rifles in there. He yeah, said, man, go on here, ain't, ain't no bullets in there. Go on pull the trigger, ain't no bullets in there. So, God said check. <laughs> <laughs> and true enough, it was loaded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Dad, this is oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This memory was like very recent. It was like the the Sunday 
after my, my stuff show. Uh, he said that I had that good and everything, and like he was like, he said he was totally surprised that I could like that I could uh, move like that. And um, he tried to like I guess show me how I was on stage, and I like he got like, had hands out like this. I talked to him like whoa, he <laughs> <laughs> was chopping his feet and like that. Thank you, but chill out. <laughs> I say probably one of the best ones was my 50th birthday party. Daddy was out there dancing with me and stuff and everything. And and then it came down to them playing Hey Mr. Sexy Man. Oh, yeah. And he was out there dancing and everything and we with my classmates got around and we were just saying, Hey Mr. Sexy Man, what your name is? He said, John Smith. <laughs> I mean, every time he came around, so it he has a wit about him yeah. with a straight face. It's like he's a natural born comedian, so and but he is hilarious. <laughs> and they'll wonder why we're laughing at him. But look, that's just, that's sweet and in itself. Mm. Being there when he made the case, I want y'all to know what was left over in the bowl. Is it, it, it went in my stomach. <laughs> it really did. When we I just did that. No, no <laughs> I was there. Listen, um, though that was a, a real, that was one of my most fondest moments because I look forward to being in prison when he made his cakes. I look forward to being in prison because I look forward to eating all of the leftovers that did not go in the pan. A hot mess. Oh, <laughs> uh, for me. Like I said, he taught me how to be humble, how to be respectful, be kind, and just work hard. Also taught me how to drive. That was very fun and funny. Cause um, he was like, always good to know about about how slow I drive. So, but then I like go fast speed limit though. He get very upset. So I'm like, go slow, go fast. I mean, it's one. But um. <laughs> Oh, uh, but like he really like taught me just how to be a man, and like also I, I get most of like my, I guess funniness from uh, from you know. Um, I go back to um talking about how you know growing up he was the example of how you know a man should treat me like especially seeing the way he took care of my grandma, you know while she was sick after we found out she had cancer, like. He would wake up, make sure she's good, get her some breakfast and stuff. And then he would, you know, leave her there because she's good, she's in the bed watching TV, you know, whatever. Got her phone, got her puzzles with her Bible, whatever she was going to do while he was gone. And he would go cut grass. Like, he was still working, still taking care of my grandma. And, like, just being a man, perfect example, loved her endlessly. Um, until the day she, you know, transitioned. Um, just watching it and seeing him being committed, you know, to her, to his vows, uh, that was everything to me. My dad has had the greatest impact on my life. He's a stand-up guy. Um, his words, his bond. I just, you know, pray I could be half the man that he is. Um, he has taught me a lot, he taught me how to be a man, how to um, provide for my family even if I ain't got it. Um, like Jay said, um, my only job other than the job I have right now is cutting grass. Um, and I do it now to this day in my neighborhood. Um, he taught me how to sing, um, like literally would make me sit at the piano with my sister playing and make me sing and make sure I was going to write notes and I hated it even singing in church um <laughs> taught me how to find a focal point on the wall and just look at it yep. while you sing look at the clock look at the clock mm -hmm. at the church look at the clock so you would um so it could take away the nervousness. But, like I said before, um, that's my guy I'm gonna trade him for. 
nothing in the world. Um, I can't go nowhere. And he introduced us. And like this is my son. They're like, you got a good dad. Mm-hmm. And um, I knew I had a good daddy, even before people would tell me. But when they tell me, it just, you know, resonates again every time of how blessed um, we are as his kids to have him in our lives. Well, Daddy has had a huge impact on my life, again, because I'm the first and the favorite. And, um, I'm looking at the party. She's just the first girl. But, um, just to see how he interacts, push, with, um, everybody. As my brother previously stated, we can't walk in the room, everybody knowing, everybody shake his hand, everybody hugs him. We can't go anywhere. Hey, how you doing? Or he know this person. Hey, dog. Right. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, dog. Everybody named dog. Yeah. Oh, everybody, all men named dog. <laughs> I mean, it's just his personality overall, and just to see how he interacts how humble he is, how he believes in, if he tells you he's gonna do something under that commitment, that has impacted me because I try to pattern my life after him. So, um, I can't find any other words to really kind of explain the love that I have for my dad. Um, I can go to him with a problem, he'll be able to tell me, I'll just pray about it. Um, when he had this last accident, to see the impact of the car, we're blessed that he's still here. And I just thank the Lord for him. Well, he's a God fearing man. Yes, Lord. Yes, um, yes, yes. We was brought up in the church. Even when we want to go to church, when he looked out there in that audience, you better be out there in them seats. Mm-hmm. Um, just brought up in the way of Christ and um, just teaching us the right way from the beginning. Um, I love that guy. When he sang his solos or leading the song, y'all know when he didn't get into the spirit, he started pointing that finger. <laughs> and y'all just think back. <laughs> Listen, my mama used to shout. And oh um, at church, and every time, like flowers, she pass out. You <laughs> <laughs> come out the out the choir stand out the song. Give me a shoe. With the shoe will face. She'll wake up. <laughs> but um, we can't really say too much about you too much, Dad, because it's just so many things that we can really talk about. It'll be longer than this few minutes that we have now. Yeah. But uh, we can say that we truly love you. We appreciate you. Value everything that you've ever taught us, from cutting grass, from fishing, cooking cakes, making cakes, whatever it is teaching us how to be, again, be Jamaicans, giving us the opportunity to work with you at U.S. Steel. Yes. Um, affording us an education, encouraging us to continue to get our education. Um, being at our graduations, being at everything, we can't thank you enough, Daddy, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and we will look forward to more in the future. So, Dad, we'll salute you. My name is Darian Smith. My name is Miyuki Smith. I'm John Smith. This is my father. He's my father in law. Um, John Smith as a daddy to me. Um, he's the example that every young man needs in his life. Um, He's been my father for my entire life, of course, 40 years now. And um, he's been an example where I never had to look past the front door 
for a role model because he was exactly that. For me, he is a hardworking man that I ever met. He is a great singer, great baker, and most of all, he is a caring person. Being that he's been in my life, my entire life, I have so many different memories that I can um, bring up. I mean, from from fishing fishing trips to um, just conversations, one-on-one -on -one conversations to when I was a child, he, um, <laughs> you know, set me on his lap and we would ride up the alley and he will let me drive and I thought I was doing something major. Um, but he just had let me control the steering wheel. Um, just those things um, as, as growing up and, and now as a grown man, um, just bring joy to my heart to think about um, the father-son relationship that we have. To me also, I have so many memories that I would like to share. So many great things about him and the way he carry himself and take care of his home and the people around him. I, I, I always feel uh, his, his house, his yard is the best yard in, the, in his neighbor and he take care of his church. Man, his singing in church is, a, is phenomenal. It touches people's heart and brings spirit to, to all of us. Um, so many memories. Well, um, one of the memories that I was surprised was when he came, him and uh, Darren's family came to Dallas to visit us. And uh, we had a good time uh, at the porch and they came in the house. We had an arcade and uh, Daddy and uh, O'Neal, Jaden, all the boys, they were playing the arcade, which is the Pac-Man. Oh my God, he was so competitive. <laughs> he was on the game about, I don't know, about almost maybe two hours. Yeah. And he was trying to beat his record, and it, it was like, oh my god, that <laughs> he was like a big kid, and that was that was like a wow moment that you know he has the heart of boy, and that that way all the uh, his grandchildren can relate it to, you know, uh, his warmness, and then it just it touched my heart like. We love, we love him so much. Absolutely. In so many ways, um, has he made an impact in my life. Um, I am the man that I am today because of him. Um, because of the example that he's shown, because, um, you know, the things that he's taught me. And he didn't teach by words, he taught by action. Um, I know one of the things I know that he's impacted in my life is he taught me, he was like, at the end of the day, you can lose your money, you can lose your house, you can lose your cars, but at the end of the day, all you have is your word. And if you say you're going to do something, then do it. And that's the integrity that he has, that's the character that he has. And that's what I try to instill into my kids is that, you know, all you have is your word. And your word is bond. So if you say you're gonna do something, then do it. And that's the model that I live by and I got that from my father. So impacted me in so many different ways and I, I'm very appreciative for all the things that he's instilled in me as a father. Daddy impacted me, my life, through his action and care to other people. Um, <clears throat> when I go through something that I want to uh, uh, don't want to do all the best, 
I always rem remember how daddy will take care of the business. If he do it, then I can do it. And then I want to do it as, uh, as he does. I want to uh, seek excellent as he does in many uh, area of his life. And as he impacted my husband's life, that uh, impacted our marriage. And I truly, I can say that marriage has ups and down. When we're down, I always think about daddy. Daddy know how to take care of our family. Daddy knows uh, how to take care of his wife. Daddy has integrity. Daddy take care of people. So I know what he do is in him. So even though, <laughs> even though we met each other or I feel like, oh, and it happens. And I stop. You know, that really stopped me thinking going farther away, farther and going down, uh, thinking negative because daddy brought so much positive in, in his life and our life and our marriage. So, yes, daddy impacted us, but truly, truly impacted our marriage. And his, the way he lived, is truly a blessing to our life. And then I thank God for that. I just want to say, you know, Daddy, um, we love you. We appreciate you um, for every little thing. I mean, the laughs, um, teach me how to make your famous capes. Um, just just everything uh, that you instilled in us, the, the, the uh, allowing me to choose Alabama over Auburn. Um, you know, we are the champions, right? So um, just everything, everything that you um, instilled in me, that you poured into me, um, the, the times that we have when we talk to each other on Saturdays and, and Sundays, um, I cherish those moments. I, I just appreciate that. And I appreciate you uh, being in my life, uh, my entire life. And that's important because everybody don't have that opportunity. We love you so much. And we thank you for everything you do for our family and the community. You are, you are very appreciated and you're a blessing to us continue to, may God continue to bless you, and I, uh, yeah, continue to bless you, Dad. We love you. Love you, Pops. My mother-in-law and my father-in-law were two wonderful couples. I didn't have no problem with them. They let me come see their daughter, and, you know, before we got married, and after we got married, they was they was in our lives. We didn't have we, we didn't have no problem whatsoever. They was a wonderful couple. We uh, with my brother-in-laws and my sister-in-laws, we had a we we always have had a good relationship. They uh they respect me and I respect them. I don't get in their business. They don't get in my business. And we laugh and we talk and we have a wonderful time when we all meet together. I am Jatonia Renee. Huey Bryant. Man, that's a long name, boy. My name is Earl Bryant. Earl Bryant. Famous. You know, like Paul Bat Bryant. Nah. John Smith is my brother in law. He was married to my oldest sister. Santa Maria Hardy Smith. I am related by uh, marrying this young lady over here, the one that got the long name. Uh, so that would make John my brother. I met him 
He was at the wedding. A lot of people were at that wedding. Actually, he sung in the wedding. They were, yes, they did. And LaSaver played the piano, didn't she? Uh, my fondest memories of my brother-in-law is I do that he loved my sister, but I really found out exactly how much he did when she was sick. I'll never forget. We had all got prepared for her uh, open heart surgery and they canceled it. Then Sweden would go to work every day, come home, I guess take a bath or whatever. Then he'd go up there and be with her in the hospital. And thank God that he did because the day that she had her open heart surgery, my brother-in-law was the only one that was there. He was there at the beginning, all the way through, and at the end. Everybody else had got snowed, iced in. No one could be there with her, but thank God for my brother-in-law and the love that he had for his wife, that he was there for her and she knew that she was loved. And my fun and memory is just getting to know him. Uh, he can make you laugh. He can make you laugh even when you say it. But uh, he's a laid back a uh, good person, very good guy, someone that everybody need to know. Uh, and he's uh, the type of person that love people. The impact that John has made in my life has made me know how much I am appreciated by him and the family and he showed me what it's like to be a good brother-in-law. There's never been a time that I called and asked him, sweetie, can you do this for me or do you know this person? If he said, well, bae, I don't know how to do that, but I know somebody that can. Or he would do whatever it is I asked him to do. And without no hesitation, he did. Uh, I guess impact is, I'm glad that uh, he's one of my brother-in-laws. And uh, with that being said, that's a good impact right there because I seem to get along with all my brother-in-laws and that's a good thing. i like to say, John, I have had the opportunity to have known you, a sweetener that's there right now, I've had the opportunity of knowing you ever since I was knee-high to a duck. That was, I wasn't even in my teen years, I don't think. And I have known you to this day, and I can say you have been the same from way back then, and I'm now in my 60s, and back then I wasn't even in my teens, a good, not really in my teens. Uh, you've been the same, and I'm going to say to you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Love you then, love you now. Yes, well, after she said all that, I guess it ain't much left for me to say. I love you too. And uh, when we all get to heaven, because I know you're going to heaven, uh, I'll come by your mansion and we'll sit back and talk about the good old days, uh, talk about the bad old days. My name is Deborah Cunningham. My name is Kenneth Cunningham Sr. I am uh, one of the sister-in-laws. Brother-in-law. Uh, I met Sweden through my sister, which is your mother, through dating years and years ago. Uh, I really can't really remember for real how I actually met him, but that's how we came to know each other, through my sister. I met uh, John Smith through Deborah Cunningham. Yeah, I met uh, Sweetening through my sister, which um, was his wife. Uh, back in the day, 
during dating time, um, they always had to have a chaperone. And I happened to be the chaperone, so I pretty much got a chance to go on a lot of the dates. So I guess that's how we became really, really close. At the time that we started out, uh, I was really young, so a lot of times we, I got a lot of chance, a lot of times to go on dates. A lot of times I probably fell asleep, so I really can't tell what I went on the date. But I was supposed to be the chaperone on the date. Well, when I met John, it was through Deborah, and you know your first perception uh, of a person. He he looked like he was like. A nerd type, yeah, and like you know, he really was scared, like you know. But when I got to know him a little bit better, you know, my my perception changed. Oh, like I think I stated originally, I'm one of the favorite sister-in-laws. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, we are very good buddies. We we um, our relationship blossomed. We talk about a lot of stuff. We're good friends. Uh, as years went on, as I got grown, he ended up being uh, my lawn uh, service person. And I looked forward to the time when he was coming over to do the lawn because he couldn't leave because I got to always come out there and bring something to drink. And then we got to sit down and we got to chat. And we got to be in said. Babe, let me go now, cause I, I got to go do somebody else, y'all. And I said, okay, sweetie, you go on, so you won't say I'm holding up your time. But then he said, well, babe, wait, let me tell you this, let me tell you this. And then we'll go talking and going on. But anyway, we're, we are, we are good friends, very good friends. We just, we got a lot of life together. Sweetening is just sweetening. I mean, he's just, I mean, he's somebody that you would want to be around, especially if you're going through, because he's just funny. I mean, I can't tell you no one specific thing. Um, not right off the bat. I mean, I just like being around your dad because he's just that type of person. He's a fun type of person. Well, I can tell you one of the fondest uh, moments, and um, it, it's it's uh, really mean a lot to me because in 2004, when I was diagnosed with cancer, well, I was doing my own yard work. And he came to me and he said that, uh, you know, which he called me Rick, a nickname. And he said, Rick, he said, uh, don't worry about your grass. I'll cut your grass. And, and, and that, that meant more to me because other people at my church, they said that they, was do, they would do it. But when you know someone that care about you, and they decide they want to do it, you know they really mean it. And the other people, I didn't know whether it was temporary or whether they was going to stop or whatever, whatever. But Sweetney, believe it or not, since 2000, it, had, it was around 2005 because it was the latter part of 2004 when I was diagnosed. But in 2005, because the grass started growing back, and then he cut it all the way up until, what is it, 2022? Mm -hmm. He cut it all the way up until 2021. Mm -hmm. That's a long, that's, that's, a, long time. that's a commitment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and I'm, that was, you know, it's all like you feel like you're indebted to a person when they pour their um, they hard work into you. And, it, and, and he didn't just come and just cut it and mm -hmm. go. He made it look, so manicured. Our yard stood out. And so that, that was my fondest memory. He made an impact on my life because of the way that I seen him um, step up to be 
oh man, now the way we were raised, my dad was important in my life. My dad was important in my life. And my sister was my oldest sister. And he married my sister and I seen him step up to the plate to show me to how he portrayed being a real man because my dad was the first real man in my life. And I seen Sweden step up to be a real man in my sister's life. He took care of his wife, and then when the children came along, he took care of his family. And I admired that. And then when God blessed me, he blessed me with someone to step up to be the example that my dad did in my life. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like I was saying about him cutting the grass, you know, you don't you don't find too many people that's committed. And you know, he committed to the church. He was, you know, we talked and he was committed to his pastor. And it's like, he wouldn't let nobody talk about him. And so that's, that's commendable to me because, you know, you can, you, can, you can fall to anything because there's so much stuff, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't let nobody talk about uh, his pastor. And that, that, that speaks volumes to me, you know, because you can always say, oh, what I am, and then when it's time to perform, then you say, oh, Oh, well, yeah, he is that or he is that. No, just stand up. And that's what he was. He always stood up. And, and see, like you were saying, that's, what, that's, that's the characteristic of a real man. You stand in spite of how the situation looks. And I, I just thank him for that. My family role model and my traits was just trying to be who I am. Because I, I, I never had a role model, I'm going to be honest with you. My brothers, they, 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 they weren't a good role model. And so I knew in life if I wanted to, to do something or be something, I had to strive for myself to do what I need to be done to make myself successful in life. Because I was proud, I ain't going to say I was proud, well I was proud of myself, but, but mama, I thank I thank a lot for my mother. She she didn't let us run around. You you couldn't run around and stay out late at night. She wasn't gonna have that. And well, I have some, I have some brothers now. They they tried it. You know they they did it. But I never did do it because back then when Mama told you something, you uh, I never whooped y'all with switches, did I? Okay, well. That's what Mama used to do. So I thought about that. I said, man, she plaited them switches. And she just, what, what makes her care? And she'll send you out there to get them. And if you can bring about a good one, she'll go find a good one. But, but, but besides all that, she was a wonderful person. My mama was. My mama was. She, uh, the house I'm staying in now, uh, I've been there now 40. 53, my wife died, 52 years, I think, 52 or 53 years. And my mama, my mother was instrumental in me getting that house. She, she got that house. And uh, she came in possession of a house over here on 3rd Avenue. And she had that house rented out. And when me and Sam married, my wife married, we, we moved in. And we had some work to do because it was messed up. We knew when you rent homes out, you know, you, but we came up on the welfare, if y'all know, if you know what that is. Uh, we didn't have anything. We weren't the wealthy, but my mama ended up with two houses off the welfare. But, but it was a blessing. 
And I thank the Lord today for where I am and what I am and whose I am. Because I declare the Lord has blessed me. He really has blessed me. And I, I, I'm not the type of person that, that can remember. And, and, and I thank the Lord for that. I, I don't have to remember that other folks, some, some, some folks can remember from the, I ain't gonna say the day they were born. All the way up to, they tell you every detail. I can't do that. I can't do that. And uh, when I went to school, I got my lesson. We had a test. I studied for that test, passed that test, but don't give me that test tomorrow. That, that's gone. Yeah, I studied for another test. But, uh, but the Lord bless me to, to get where I am, and I thank Him for it. Raised four wonderful children, had a wonderful wife, and, uh, and I thank the Lord for, for, for my church family. And I continue to pray for them that our church will continue to grow strong. And I pray for my children too. Most of them, part of the accomplishment that I've had in life of being saved. And I thank the Lord for that. That's the most of them. I mean, if everybody could be saved, get saved, and accept the Lord as that person as Savior, and uh, knowing that they going to go to heaven when they die, they won't go to hell, because the Lord has saved them and gave them a new lease on life. So that's, that, that, that's my biggest accomplishment. Biggest accomplishment. I mean, I've, I've had more, I've had different ones, but uh, I've had plaques, uh, pictures on the wall, and he met, he met McDonald's. I, they got a sign in there at McDonald's, a picture of Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, they got at the bottom that dedicated to John Smith at McDonald's Breakfast Club up there. And so I, I received quite a few recognition, but being saved is the most important one in life. Yeah, I got a message uh, that I can leave for the younger family, younger folks in the community and stay with the Lord. Go to church, trust in God, and be fair and honest in your dealing. Whatever you do, let it be real. And the Lord will continue to bless you. That, 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 uh, the, the Lord is the key to all of this. If you trust in the Lord and, and keep trusting and having faith in Him and do the things that will be pleasing in his sight. And then I can assure you that you will be successful in life. You have some, everybody gonna have some ups and downs, stumbling and fall. But if you ain't got somebody to lean on, then you ain't got nothing. But if you have the Lord on your side, then you can make it in life. <laughs>